camera. We are ready. Where's my moderator? Is my moderator ready? Thank you for participating today. We are now joined by Marcus Garrett and we'll begin the press conference. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question is from Bay Gregorian from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Marcus, Fahey Gregorian from the Kansas City Star. Could you just uh, describe um, when you guys felt the game was turning your way and what this atmosphere was like as an NCAA tournament game? Oh, it was a great as atmosphere out there. Um, I felt like the game kind of turned, um, I'd probably say when the clock was messing up. Um, when the clock was messing up and the game was just paused for a second, I felt like we locked in there, and that's when the game kind of turned around. Our next question is from Billy Witz from the New York Times. Yeah, Marcus, hi. Um, you know, can you describe what it was like, I guess, to see David uh, arrive yesterday and be able to practice and kind of what his presence, not just his presence, but the way he played, what that meant? Oh, uh, he got to be able to win today. His presence means a lot to us. Um, I think he's been our leading scorer down the stretch in conference, and um, he's really picked it up offensively. So, I mean, getting our big man back was definitely huge for us. And, and yesterday, we were definitely trying to get him, get his reps back and get his legs back under him. Did you, were you confident that he'd be able to do that? I mean, for being out for a week or so? Oh uh, yeah, I mean he's kind of yeah. When you when you think about it, he's played basketball his whole life. So I mean, I think him taking ten days off wouldn't take away what he does on the basketball court. It'd just be more fatigue. I would I would say. Okay, thank you. Our next question is from Scott Chasen from Kansas twenty four seven Sports dot com. Hey Marcus, how's it going? Great. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, I wanted to ask you about uh, Dewan, the spark he gave you guys today. Can you speak to his performance and just how he wasn't phased uh, coming in and playing on the NCAA tournament stage? Um, He played great. Um, He came out there, he did what Dewan does, and he took the shots that was open and he knocked them down. Uh, I feel like he played a great game. He gave us the boost we needed, and he was plus 22, which is great. So, I mean, I, I feel like he played great. Not a guy who takes a lot of threes, uh, but he's made quite a few of them. Well, what do you think about his confidence just shooting the ball? Uh, I feel like he has confidence in shooting the ball. I mean, he just doesn't take them all the time because that's kind of not what he does for our team. But I feel like whenever he does take them, it, he has a chance to knock them down. Reminder to the media, please check your settings to be sure you are identified by name and affiliation. You will only be called on if you are properly identified. Our next question is from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Hey, Marcus, uh, they left the open a little bit today. It seemed like you were comfortable taking that outside shot, uh, especially the third one here from the corner. You, you kind of bounced on your way back. Uh, how big was your shot today for, for what you guys needed? Um, I, I mean, the atmosphere had, had me kind of like feeling good. Um, I feel like I was open there. I had to take those shots, and I was just able to knock them down. I also wonder when Dave was out there, we did see him, you know, on that end one at the free throw line. He kind of celebrated like we've seen him do all year. What was he like out there? I mean, did he save his energy or did he bring it? Or in the he huddle, how was he? I mean, yeah, he definitely brought his energy. From the time he arrived yesterday, uh, we felt his energy. We felt his presence. He was just happy to be with us and he was happy to be back on the court. How tough a matchup for those guys? Uh, definitely a tough matchup. That's a great team. Uh, the way they moved the ball, the way they shot the ball, and I feel like the way they spread the floor was, was great, and it was a hard matchup. Our next question is from Adam Rittenberg from ESPN. Yeah, Marcus, another one about David. I mean, you know, I know that they were they were saying he might not even uh, play a ton today, but for him to actually exceed his, his minutes average of the season in a game where the other team big man is kind of going off. How, how significant was that just as a teammate to watch him? Uh, that, that was definitely incredible. Um, knowing that he hadn't practiced or did anything in the last 10, 10, 11 days and for him to come out and just be so productive on the offensive end, that was definitely something great to see. Next question is from John Title from HoopsHD.com. 
Hey, Marcus. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, I wanted to ask about your three-point shooting. I believe you only made two threes during the entire month of February, but you've now made seven in your last three games in March. So is it something that they need you to make them more, or have your, has your confidence built more? Or what's up with your three-point shooting? Uh, it's March. Uh, I know it's winning time. Uh, I know I have to knock down shots. I'm um, stepping up and having confidence and shooting the ball more. Our next question is from Sam Mellinger from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Marcus. Um, even when you guys were down um, in the first half and into the second half, it, there didn't seem to be any panic from you guys. I'm just wondering, what was it? Is it something internal, your belief in yourself? Was it something you saw in the strategy of the game? What, what made you guys appear to be at least confident throughout? Uh, Coach Self, he's telling us every time uh, it's a long game, um, just stay with it. Uh, keep chipping away at the league, and, and we'll get it where we want it. Our next question is from John Zener from the Associated Press. Oh, yeah, hey, Marcus. Could you talk about, I know it's hard to look ahead this quick, but have you seen USC, right? Uh, and got any kind of preference on, on matchups? Um, not, kind of don't have a preference. Um, I've watched film on both teams already, and whichever team wins, I feel like Coach Self will have us ready for them. Thank you. Our next question is from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Marcus, at halftime, what, what was the focus? What were you guys thinking? Uh, you know, you had the rough start, obviously, but then you were down eight after you kind of calmed down, too. Uh, what was your mindset coming out of half to, or the second half? Uh, stay calm. Chip away at the lead. It's a long game. Um, we, we know what type of team we are. We know if we lock in and defend that we could cut the lead and come back and get exactly what we want. And um, I feel like when we locked in defensively, we was able to do that. Did you see everyone stay calm? Because we talked earlier in the week about, you know, this is a new experience for a lot of your teammates. Uh, you've been through it, obviously. But did you see everyone stay calm? Or did you have to help calm them down? Oh, uh, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like we all was calm at halftime. We all knew exactly what we had to do to go out there and win that game. And um, I feel like that's what we went out there and did. Our next question is from Maya Peterson from the Daily Kansan. Hi, Marcus. This is Maya Peterson from the Daily Kansan. Wanted to talk to you about the toughness of this team from start to finish of this game. What, did, what does this say about the toughness of the team this year? Well, I, I definitely feel like we're a tough team. We've been through a lot of adversity this year, so I feel like every time adversity hits us, I feel like we're able to bounce back, and that's something that we showed today. With that rough first half, we was able to bounce back in the second half and come out with a win. Next question from Gus Bailo from the University Daily Kansan. Hey, Marcus. I just wanted to talk about uh, – this is Gus Bailo from the University Daily Kansan. Uh, I just wanted to ask about your shot today. It seemed like you could find your way to, you know, get some shots to fall, and it was ultimately big down the stretch. Can you just talk about your shot and, you know, especially from outside the arc? Um, it's some co – all the coaches kind of tell me every day just to take the shots. If they leave me open, shoot the ball every time I'm open. And that's kind of what I tried to do today was just be aggressive from beyond the arc. You, know, you talked about it earlier, but can you talk about the, the performance of the Groves brothers of Eastern Washington? Oh, they was great. Um, they was great. They were definitely a hard guard with the way they were stretching the floor, the way they could drive, the way they was posting. It was definitely a hard matchup for us. And our last question will be from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Marcus, I wanted to ask you about playing with three fouls. You got that third one late. Um, were you worried at all? Did anybody give you any advice? How did you manage that? Uh, no, nah, I wasn't worried. Um, I kind of know how to play without fouling and without gambling, without reaching, just putting myself in good situations where I don't have to foul. So I kind of wasn't worried at all. Did, did it affect how you were able to guard or, or do what you do? It didn't look like it. But uh, not, not much, but I kind of feel like it took me off the ball. I couldn't just be aggressive with Probably the, uh, with the ball handler bringing the ball up the court, but overall it, it didn't it didn't mess with me. DeJuan say anything? Like he'd take care of it? Yeah, he told me he got it. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus, for your time, and best of luck in the next round. Thank you. You'll be joined momentarily by Coach Bill Self. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary.
I got a reprieve till 320. Oh, I guess we're not muted. <laughs> Can they see me? Yes, sir. And the moderator will announce uh, who the person is. We will begin with an opening statement from Coach Bill Self and then go to questions. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach Self, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go on to questions. Well, obviously, we're just thrilled that we won. Uh, you know, they, they uh, uh, Eastern Washington, they, they outplayed us, uh, you know, for the most part, the first. 30 minutes of the game. Uh, we had our little runs, but they had more. And certainly the, the, the Groves brothers were the two best players in the game in the first half. And, and uh, we didn't guard them. Uh, they had us all messed up with ball screen defense. Uh, uh, we didn't look very good at all. And, and, uh, but somehow or another, we kind of hung in there. And, and then we kind of turned it on the second half. David really played well, considering coming off uh, uh, his, his isolation with COVID. And, and Marcus made shots. Juan was probably the best player we had from start to finish. And and uh, Ochai and, and, and Christian also made some plays. But it, it was a hard game. It was a great game to win in the tournament. It's great to advance. But, uh, uh, but you know, we, we got outplayed for the majority of the game today. They were better than us. And somehow or another, we just kind of hung in there and made some plays at the right time. Now we'll go to questions from the media. Use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. Our first question will be from Bay Gregorian from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Bill, it's Vahe. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Can, can you just elaborate a little bit on how fitting it is that, or odd it is, I guess, that David did what he did today, coming back from everything? And then I'll have one other follow-up, please. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's, uh, I guess it's fitting. I, I, I don't know. You know, we, we were playing pretty well as a team there at the end of, of the season, and David was playing his best ball. and. I really thought, and our doctors thought that that uh, you know we could get between 15 and 20 minutes out of him today, and I certainly, after the way he started the game, I didn't think that he was going to give us much offensively, uh, except you, you know, or defensively, just give us five fouls. But he kind of got his legs under him, and and uh, he was really, really good the second half. I mean, really good. Uh, he you know didn't get out to the shooters. Uh, 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 can get out to uh, Groves a couple of times, but he he played great, and so it was good to see. You know, maybe gives me some hope now with Jalen coming back. You know, maybe he can he can provide some key minutes for us on Monday because we'll we'll need we'll need uh, everybody. But but uh, I, it it was good to see. It was pretty impressive how he played and his conditioning, considering all the stuff he's come off of. And and the other thing, Bill, is just you've coached a lot of NCAA tournament games by now. Can you describe the? The feeling of being in this for an NCAA game, obviously you had it all season, but but it's a different kind of stage now to have it be this kind of atmosphere, what this arena felt like. Well, it, it, you know, I, I'm looking at the stats here, and i got to put my glasses on to see. It says attendance was 961. I mean, so uh, uh, 900 people coming to an NCAA tournament game. And, and, and granted, I don't think the atmosphere played a, a role in who won or who didn't win. Uh, uh, it just felt different. It was the coldest arena I think I've ever been in starting the game. Uh, uh, I didn't feel it that way at the end. I thought it warmed up some, but I mean, it was literally 60, 58 degrees when the game started, it felt like. And, and, and uh, you know, we've been a team that's been a really hot, hot starting team or a, a, a really cold starting team. And, you know, you get down nine to nothing, and, and now the, the collar gets a little tighter, uh, uh, all these things. And, and fortunately for us, we were in real trouble if it wasn't for Dewan, Dewan came in and kind of sparked us and kind of held it steady for a while. But th this had to make the feeling of a real pressure game. And so uh, it's good to get that one out of our system because hopefully we're going to have a few more of these if, we can t if we're able to play well. Thanks, Bill. Our next question is from Billy Witz from the New York Times. Yeah, Bill, hi, this is Billy Witz from the New York Times. Hey, Billy. What, what sort of handicap do you think uh, 
the COVID issues were today. I mean, whether whether it was you know David or the two guys you missed, you you were missing, and also just kind of what it's what it's been like uh, you know through the last week or so. Well, I I think uh, uh, you know the guys have handled it well, and the guys that 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 that. that uh, uh, contracted uh, COVID, they've handled it well. Their maturity level's been, you know, really high. Uh, you know, it wasn't a woe was me. And, and uh, we've told all our guys we need to play as hard as we can to make sure your teammates get a chance to experience the tournament. So uh, uh, although it didn't really look like that the first half, but I, I think we've handled it pretty well. It, it's, it's uh, you know, we've, we kind of got a motto that we say every year, you know, faces change, expectations do not. And, and, you know, we didn't talk about what we didn't have. We just talked about what we had to, in order to play well and what we had was enough. And, and uh, I'm not sure that it is to go deep in the tournament. We need to have our full complement of guys. But, but certainly uh, it's, it's, it's been – it hasn't been great, but it hasn't probably been as disruptive as what you may think it has because those three guys, they, they were all in Lawrence. They weren't around us, all these things. And so it's – it's, it, it hasn't been a, 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 a glaring distraction uh, at all. And, and, of course, David's attitude coming back was tremendous. Can I, can I just follow up? Just, I mean, I think you're one of four teams that are, um, you know, dealing with uh, not having a, your uh, full roster. Mm -hmm. And Josh Passner yesterday just talked about just the anxiety that he's felt of every time, a, you know, every time a test comes yeah. in of, you know, what is you know it's going to be positive, negative. What what's that going to mean? And as a coach, has you know, I guess have you have you and you imagine your you know your colleagues that are in a similar position has has there I don't know been like a level of anxiety yeah. that uh, is unusual. Yeah. Oh, there's no question had and 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 there has and and the the anxiety occurred from uh, you know October. 15th till now I mean it's been a, it's been high anxiety for everybody I mean you know my trainer it is is uh, uh, and my staff as soon as we get our results back from from uh, uh, the test and you know testing three times a week doing the PCR it doesn't matter if it's two o'clock in the morning as soon as we get the the text message from the company uh, giving us the results we all have group text you know and and, and uh you know, here I'm getting texts from the doc and the trainer at 2 a.m. when the results come back, and I'm awake, ready to ready to take the text. So, it 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 has been a high anxiety thing. I you know, and I felt I I feel bad for obviously uh, OU, and I don't know everybody has been affected, and, and obviously for Josh and Georgia Tech because, I mean, these kids work their butts off all year long, and then something outside of their control uh, uh, certainly puts them in a situation where they can't you know live out their dream and and so I feel for everybody I, I uh, uh, we, we, we had a situation where it's been negative for so many teams that had pauses I, you know I, I hate to say this I don't think pauses are good it may be blessings in disguise that that the pauses pauses occurred to, to better ensure you having a a, a, a healthy NCAA tournament so uh, uh, but yeah it, it, it's been a pretty stressful year but it's one it's one of those things I don't think that you can dwell on it it's just Whatever happens, happens, and you, you can't change it. So you just kind of got to ride with it. Our next question is from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Hey, Coach, one more on Dave. Um, did you notice any particular area of his game or, or what he could give you that, that he was most affected by today? Uh, I thought he scored over his right shoulder. You know, they, they, they took away his left shoulder, and, and, and they made him score over his right shoulder. He did a great job with that. Uh, I, I didn't think he moved great defensively at all. Uh, I didn't think – I don't know how many rebounds he ended up with, but I don't think he rebounded the ball. Uh, uh, well, he ended up getting nine, five offensively, so that's pretty good. But I, I, I didn't feel like he looked as good moving, uh, but I thought, I thought considering all the time off, I thought he looked very patient offensively once we got into the second half. Yeah, and, you, you know, you told this team a while ago that you want to get them comfortable playing and, and winning games in the 60s, and then you come out yeah. and – throw up 50 in the second half today and you had to have it. I mean, does there, does there any, is there any confidence that can come from something oh, like I, that? I think, I think showing you can win any style. I think so. You know, I, I remember, uh, I don't know if uh, we, we played Carolina or somebody in the NCAA tournament. It's like 48 to 48 at halftime or something. 
And our guys were so confident at halftime because they knew that wasn't us. That's not how we play. And so we played their game and we still were tied. So we now if we play our game, we'd be in good shape. I'm hoping we kind of feel this way now. I'm happy we scored some points, but that's not real. Uh, uh, what's real is we gotta, we gotta defend and we gotta rebound. And, and uh, if we do those things, we can play with folks. But hopefully this will give some confidence offensively, but also be a reality check. We have to start grinding on the defense again. Yeah, and last one, can you just talk about Marcus today? He was good everywhere, shot the ball well. I mean, it's what you want from a senior, I'm sure. Well, that's what I want from anybody. But, but, uh, but yeah, Mark was really good today. He uh, 20 and eight. And, and three assists and one turnover, and he played out of foul trouble. So uh, I thought he was great. I thought, I thought he and Juan in the backcourt t- today was probably about as good a twosome as we've had all year long, handling the ball and passing it. And, and everybody else did fine, too. Everybody else did well. But I, it, it was nice to see uh, uh, Marcus and Juan shoot the ball like that because we needed them to shoot the ball like that to win. But, you know, sometimes this year we've been playing three against five. Uh, or, uh, uh, so to speak, offensively, because people dare us to shoot, we don't shoot it. And it's a good shot when their shoulders are square, and it was good that they took those. You, you might have heard him. He said he wasn't worried when he had the three fouls. Were you? Uh, you know, of course he says that now that he didn't foul the, the, <laughs> the rest of the game. But uh, I, I, I didn't feel great about it. But I thought once we got to about the, the 13 or 14-minute mark of the second half, I felt better because I, I, th- I thought he could manage it the rest of the way in. Thanks. Our next question is from Maya Peterson from the University Daily Kansan. Hey, Coach. Maya Peterson here with two quick questions. First, can you talk about the toughness of this team from January to now and just today's game? Uh, well, I didn't think we played tough, but I thought we were pretty mentally tough, uh, if that makes sense. I didn't, I didn't think we played tough. We don't, we don't, we don't beat them on the glass like, like I thought we could. Uh, uh, obviously, we didn't guard our man. They shoot 50%. So I, I don't think we didn't defend the arc great. So I don't think we played tough, but I thought our mental toughness was pretty good considering you get behind like that. And that's when panic could set in, and it didn't. So I, I thought that was a uh, good sign of toughness. All right, and then a follow-up question for you, Coach. It's been a year since you played your first March Madness game. Was it worth the wait? Uh, well, it's really been two years. Uh, you know, because we, we played, I guess, uh, uh, two years ago. And, and no, it wasn't worth the wait. Uh, uh, I don't want to have to do this again, uh, uh, certainly. And there's always a chance it could happen. But we've been so fortunate and blessed around here to, to be in a lot of tournaments in a row. And, and you should never take it for granted. It's a reward for your kids. So uh, um, it couldn't happen soon enough. But I just hope like heck it never happens again. Our next question is from Scott Chasen from Kansas247sports.com. Uh, hey, Bill, I'm just curious, did you get a, a read on the symptoms uh, David was dealing with, and, and were they severe at all? Today during the game? Uh, no, no, coming in just from this last week and a half. Oh, no, no, I, 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 I didn't think he, uh, to my knowledge, he had very little, if any, symptoms. Okay, and, and then what was the acclimation uh, process like in terms of getting him back, figuring out how much he could play, what he could do for you guys? What was that process well, it, like it, yesterday? It, 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 there really wasn't a process. We hooked him up to a hot heart monitor. Uh, we evaluated him during our practice. He probably practiced 70% of the practice. Uh, he looked good. We, we took him out. We sat him, all these things. Uh, uh, we had a pretty good gauge on his fatigue. Uh, and, and we really didn't plan on planning that this much today, Scott, but obviously it worked out this way. Thank you. Our next question is from Sam Mellinger from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, Sam. Congratulations. Uh, I want to ask you, kind of just follow up on two things that you just mentioned here. One is uh, David goes over the sort of the, what you had in mind for his minutes going in. What, what was that? Was that just a response to how he was feeling? Yes. Looking on the court? Yeah. It, well, it, was a, it was a response to what, you know, Doc McGee said, Bill, I think he give you 10 or half. You know, if you, but, but it's a little bit different than the NCAA tournament. I'm sure if you watch it on TV, you don't know, notice this. You could, if you're playing, if you get a timeout, five timeouts in the first half and five timeouts in the second half, it's hard to get tired. You are setting so long, and all the timeouts are a minimum of three minutes. Isn't that right, Chris? I mean, I mean, so you know, people talk about subbing around timeouts and things like that. I mean, if you can get to a timeout, you're going to be 100% by the time that 
the 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 timeouts over because there's so much rest. So I think I think uh, uh, Sam, if it was a regular season game, I don't think he could have played as many minutes. But but he was the the couple of times he got really fatigued, you know, he's fine after sitting there three minutes. So uh, that probably helped us out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's interesting. You you also mentioned the. Um, mentally tough that the, that there wasn't any panic and that's how it looked at least watching on tv what why is that what, what do you think was in this group or in this game that, that they avoided that uh you know i don't know i think the staff was probably more panicked than the players were but i i, I actually you know uh these guys you know they play at kansas and they play a lot of big games and and we've been behind a lot and we've been ahead a lot and we know that it's a long game and we, and we know no lead is safe or and, 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 and no deficit is too big, you know, if you, and, until you get to at least a certain point in the game. And so, I, I mean, that's something we always dwell. Uh, uh, you know, when we, when we practice, I, I love to practice when we don't make shots. Uh, so that way we, we can learn how to continue to grind and those sorts of things. So I, I think that's as much as anything uh, uh, is the fact that these guys are used to it. It's not, it's not anything that I don't think that we do specifically to, to make them confident in those situations. It's just, you know, been there, done it type attitude with most of these guys. Thank you. Our last question today will be from Benton Smith from the Lawrence Journal World. Hey, Benton. Benton, are you with us? Our last question will be from Gus Balo from the University of Daily Kansas. Hey, Coach. Gus Baylor from the University of Daily Kansan. Um, I know you touched on it a little bit earlier, but can you just talk about the performance of the Groves brothers today? And then I'll yeah. ask you one more question after this. Yeah, I, I thought they were fabulous. Uh, uh, I actually thought, watching the game, I, I thought that, the, uh, that you know, it, you, you guys have followed us know that if our big guy has to guard on the perimeter, it's hard for us. And, and they played uh, Tanner on the perimeter uh, far more than what we thought they would. Uh, you know he's 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 made 17 threes on the season and he makes five in 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 uh, in in, uh, in one game and if I'm not mistaken we're three of them are in the first half pretty early so uh, they, that was a strategy by them I'm sure to try to play to that when we had two bigs in the game uh, and then uh, you know I, I thought he was great but you know I actually think his his, his little brother if you can call him that you know to me he's about as good looking a prospect a, a, a around I mean he's six foot eight or nine or whatever and he can shoot and he can post and he got handles and vision uh, uh th those guys were very impressive to me really both really good players they've, they've done a great job recruiting i don't know i don't remember if they're local kids or not but uh pretty impressive what they've done yeah and then you already touched on it earlier but you know the play of marcus today and i asked him also about his shot you know were you confident that he could make you know the shots he did today you know he had 20 points and, you know, was able to get it going from the on the arc. You know, Mark Marcus, you know, he's not pure by any stretch, but he's become streaky. And if you're streaky, that means you're capable of making a few or several in a row. And and he he's done that. Uh, uh, you know, he, he's had games where he didn't, but he's had multiple games, I think, in the last, in our winning streak, if I'm not mistaken, where, you know, he's made a minimum of two a game. So, uh uh, those were all big today, and you could tell that he was feeling it because they, they didn't guard him. They didn't guard he and Juan, and they dared him to shoot, and those guys made him pay today. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck in the next round. Okay, thanks, guys. That's it for this post-game news conference. It transferred to the coach's interview.